Good evening and welcome to the campus of UW-Whitewater. I'm your host Alex Monti and alongside me today is Kyler Pfaff. We ask you to please excuse our momentary interruption of sports from your regular daily schedule. Today we will be discussing everything to do with the NBA playoffs. Let's get right into it. The 2023 NBA playoffs have begun, which means that play-in tournament has ended. Let's take a look at the teams who were fortunate enough to make the last spots in the playoffs and what teams unfortunately missed the playoffs from each conference. Yeah, so some notable teams that uh, missed the playoffs would definitely be the Dallas Mavericks. Um, Dallas, obviously, you know, the news broke out where they were fined $750,000 for uh, tampering the last game against the Bulls. Um, it was an elimination game for the Mavericks, and they decided not to play uh, key players such as like Kyrie Irving. They didn't want to uh, risk them getting hurt, I would assume. But uh, it was mainly because they uh, got to keep a first-round pick uh, for losing that game. So the NBA ended up fining them, you know, $750,000, which obviously to Mark Cuban is not anything. So I think he'll pay for that any day of the week. Yeah, as you said, I mean, it's really a small amount of money when it comes to the NBA. 750000 obviously, to us, may be a bit different, but in the world of sports, that really doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, apparently, the Mavs had actually intended to begin the process early, around the same time the Blazers were benching Dame around the end of March, but uh, when it came to Irving and Luka, they refused to be sat down. Uh, when comparing the punishments to other cases of tanking and tampering, look at the Dolphins. I mean, they lost picks. They got lost the first round, uh, third rounder, uh, one and a half million dollars, and then the owner was also suspended for six games. But then going back to the Trail Blazers, uh, of course, it's just unfortunate. Another year of Dame just not being able to get to play in the big games. Hopefully, they can start building around him, but I just really don't know what to expect in the future. Yeah, it's really Damian Lillard. I mean, he's the best player on that team by far. He's the third leading scorer in uh, the league, and I think he's second or tenth in assists. So he's definitely one of the best, uh, you know, offensive players for, you know, getting a bucket, but also getting his uh, peers a bucket. Um, and that, you know, can go a long way. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't make it to the playoffs. So. Um, but another team I'd like to touch base on would be the Orlando Magic. Um, Paulo Bancaro is probably going to win Rookie of the Year, so he's going to be, you know, one of the leading foundation players of that team in the long run. Um, especially with Franz Wagner too, he's definitely playing very good basketball. You also have, you know, the likes of Jonathan Isaac, Jalen Suggs, just a lot of young talent for Orlando, and that's why I think the, hopefully, you know, in the next coming years they'll be in a playoff-ready team. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of young talents just going to take some time to develop, you know, get the pieces together and just, you know, really get that experience that will really send them over the top. Obviously, Balo Bancaro being a likely rookie of the year is just a very exciting thing to have to look forward to in your future. Another thing or another team that missed the playoffs was the Jazz, which interestingly enough, despite trading away big key players such as uh, Gobert and uh, Mitchell, I, they still were able to get off to a hot start in the beginning of the year. They were leading the Western Conference early on, which was a shock to many people, but eventually they did you know, fall back down to earth and reality and it you know, simmered out. So who knows what will be in store for them next year. I mean, obviously they've got not pieces, but they have a organization that should be able to know what to do moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, some teams that made it, notable teams that made it in the play-in tournament would be the Los Angeles Lakers, obviously. Um, you know, they have LeBron, who is a record breaker, obviously, leading the NBA history in points. So he's definitely, you know, earned his spot and he's producing well in the playoffs. Um, seems like the only guy that can actually get her done for the team other than, you know, Anthony Davis. He's just a dual threat. He's able to shot block. Um, in the first game, he had seven blocks. So he's definitely a defensive present presence as well as an offensive presence. Other teams that made it would be T-Wolves, Hawks, Heat, uh, but missed would be Thunder, which is unfortunate because Chai Alexander, I mean, they really have something to look forward to in the future. But until then, next up we will discuss the playoff picture in the Western Conference. Stay tuned for more on UWW-TV. We'd love to show you what it's like to be a Warhawk. Come on! <laughs> Whitewater. You belong here! No 
know, for Hawk Talk, you know, I mean, especially on days I'm hosting, uh, you really need to be up early looking at those news stories. Even the night before, I've been finding topics that I can incorporate in the show, and I feel like we get a conversation going. Once you get the opportunity to do that with other people who appreciate it the same level as you do, it makes it that much more enjoyable. For everything sports, tune in Monday through Thursday at 91.7 The Edge or watch us on UWW TV. The UW Whitewater Bookstore is your one stop shop for apparel, textbooks, and technology. Stop in for a wide selection of gifts from our alumni, family, and name brand sections. Need to purchase or rent a textbook? Head downstairs to Textbook Services. Check out our new custom shop and create personalized apparel for your organization. Need a charger, laptop, or headphones? Our new technology section has everything you might need. For more information and bookstore hours, visit uwwhitewaterbookstore.com. Here at UW Whitewater Intramural Sports, we have a motto, a sport for everyone and everyone in a sport. Had a blast. Always have fun at intramurals. Every day we strive to go above and beyond that goal by providing healthy exercise, promoting leisure education, and giving students that competitive atmosphere they are looking for. Yes! 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 It's exciting. Brings me back to those uh, high school days with Friday Night Lights. With our 25 different intramural sports offered, we guarantee that we have a sport for you. Go to our website and find your sport today. Welcome back to Please Excuse Our Momentary Interruption of Sports from Your Regular Daily Schedule. To continue on where we left off, what does the Western Conference playoff picture look like? Yeah, so the first seed of the Western Conference is Denver Nuggets. Um, they go against the eighth seed Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, so some key things about that series is, uh, you know, obviously Nikola Jokic. Um, he's finally coming as of late, coming and scoring buckets for his team. Um, typically he's the guy that likes to be the facilitator and he's the person that you know gets all the assists and the rebounds so he's a walking triple-double um, and then again you know he's gonna be m m most likely gonna be the third you know in a row MVP so that's definitely a big sign for uh, Denver and advancing in the playoffs and you know of course Minnesota Timberwolves they got you know Anthony Edwards in the Twin Towers I like to say with uh, Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns, they're, they're both seven foot and they're both, you know, defensive presence. So they have a pretty good chance against Denver. But of course, you know, it's the back to back MVP that they have to get through first. Yeah, no, as you said, I mean, obviously the Nuggets with Jokic and uh, Jamal Murray, another piece of that is going to be a tough, tough task for the Timberwolves to handle. I mean, this is one of the rare cases in which Jokic finally has the healthy pieces around him to like help assist him. He's not just carrying the team, though he is still doing that to some extent. He actually has some other pieces to fall back on and just really spread the ball around. Uh, with the 
Timberwolves, they seem to have gotten healthy at the right time, but unfortunately it still seems a bit too late, getting a tough draw with the Nuggets, and also just not really having that built-in chemistry amongst them. But obviously Rudy Gobert being a trade acquisition is still a strong piece that has paid dividends over time. Uh, when it comes to the second seed, Memphis Grizzlies and the seventh seed, Los Angeles Lakers, it's gonna be a lot to look out for. Obviously John Morant has had issues, to put it lightly, but I mean, he is still a star player with a lot of impact, but sometimes the team can do better without him. Just looking at last year, they had a winning record without him, but this year was more akin to a 500. So perhaps he's contributing more, becoming more, or the team is more dependent upon him. But then you look at the Lakers, got LeBron, obviously you can never count out the King, especially in the playoffs. This is like his time to shine. Also acquiring uh, D'Angelo Russell, and they still have Anthony Davis there as well. Yeah, some key things for uh, Memphis as well is that they are the second seed, so they're obviously ranked pretty high in the rankings. Um, but they also have, you know, Desmond Bain, who fills in very nicely for Ja Morant. Um, you know, unfortunately, Ja Morant just can't stay healthy, so it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. But uh, Ja Morant's one of the best players in all of basketball, so as soon as he's healthy, then the, the two seed will definitely look like the two seed. Yeah, and Jaron Jackson on the defensive side is another key acquisition as well. Now let's transition to the Eastern Conference. What does the playoff picture look like in the Eastern Conference this year? Yeah, so the first seed, Milwaukee Bucks, is going, uh, goes against the uh, eighth seed, Miami Heat. You know, Miami Heat, they were one last year, but obviously they tanked a lot this year. Um, that's, uh, you know, has to do with a little health problems. Now that Tyler Harrow uh, broke his hand, he's not able to play. So that's going to be a big factor going down the road for Miami. Um, but then you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, and Giannis is, you know, also having problems uh, health-wise too. So... Um, you're looking for Chris Middleton, you're looking for that Bobby Portis type role player that, that will help you sp get that spark that you need as a team. And then you also have Drew Holiday who's having a fantastic year um, doing it both offensively and defensively. Um, and this year he's scoring a lot more points as well with that too. And it seems like Milwaukee, they've really been able to deal with adversity and you know, injuries throughout the season very well. Obviously they have experience in the playoffs, coaching staff and the players alike. So they, this is no new place for them really. So they know what to do. In regards to the Heat, obviously Jimmy Butler is still a great player, but I mean this just isn't the same team that has been in the past. Back then, like everybody had the same goal, everybody was fighting and it just seemed a bit more together and cohesive. But now it just seems a bit more disjointed, but they're still a gritty team that you really can't allow to keep late in games or in series. Uh, second seed Boston Celtics, I, I feel like they are just one of the most perfectly well-rounded teams in the league at the moment. I mean, they just have so few, if any, flaws. They're just going to be a tough team to knock out. They're going to be definitely making a deep run in this playoff. Obviously, the Atlanta Hawks is their opponent. They got the new coach, Quinn Snyder, and they still have Trey Young causing you know little issues here and there, but still a great player, especially to look out for in the playoffs. But unfortunately, I would see this being a sweep in favor of Boston. Yeah, and I also believe that um, Boston is just over power. They, they, they just have everybody that they need, and they have the best two guards, um, you know, small forward shooting guard duo in the league. Um, both are averaging over 25 points a game, which is, hasn't been done since Kobe and Shaq days, so that just shows how much dominance they actually have. Um, they're one of the best, you know, duos in the league, so if that continues to work out for them in the playoffs, they're definitely going to, you know, make it far and then hopefully they'll, you know, advance uh, in the finals. And then uh, the third seed of Philadelphia 76ers will be facing the sixth seed Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets at this point, pure rebuild realistically. They've traded away all the big pieces, the Irvings, the Hardens, the Durants and such. So now it's just going to be more looking forward to the future of what they can do. Until then, they'll just coast into these playoffs and you know, just see what happens. I imagine the Sixers are really just going to take care of business in this first round. Next, we will be giving our predictions on what teams will face each other in the NBA Finals. You're watching P.O. Myospheres here on UWW-TV. Checking in to see how Sam is doing on his project. 
and it's getting close to exporting now, the final step in the process. And it is complete, and Sam is hyped! Finally gets complete and spikes the ball into the end zone. Sam celebrating with his colleagues, and oh, they throw a flag on the play! The ref's gonna call excessive celebration. Sam is in disbelief and can't believe it! He tries to dispute the call, but the ref is not having any of it. Crew is a faith-based organization for UW-Whitewater students. Their mission? To create an inclusive Christian community for students looking to explore or grow their faiths. For me, specifically, it's been amazing to just have people to walk alongside uh, with my Christian journey on. They always say to like go and experience new things while you're at college, and I think this is just another one of those things that you should experience. Crew welcomes all students and is held at Summer's Auditorium on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Come join our crew. The P.B. Poorman Pride Center is the place to go for LGBTQ plus resources, information, and community. Located in the Warhawk Connection Center, while there, you can meet people like Mia. And I serve Impact as president this fall, as well as working for the Pride Center. Impact is our queer LGBTQ plus and ally organization on campus. We meet once a week, and we do a lot of social events, as well as education events. It feels... Like I'm way more accepted here than when I was in high school. It is like a really big family. Along with acceptance, in the Pride Center you can find a little library, a clothing closet, and a satellite location of the Warhawk Food Pantry. It, it just feels like a home to me, you know? It feels like my home away from home and there's such a community here that is so wonderful and full of joy. For more information, follow the Pride Center on Instagram at uww underscore prc. Welcome back to the show. Alongside Kyler Pfaff, I'm Alex Monti. Now that we see what the playoff picture looks like from each conference, what teams from each conference have a chance to make the conference finals and potentially all the way to the NBA finals? Yeah, so for the Western side of things, I would definitely think the Suns and then the winner of the Kings-Warriors matchup. Um, you know, that one is so crucial because, you know, it's very hard to win at either place you, uh, you happen to play at. So um, for the Warriors, you know, they are statistically one of the best home teams in the NBA and then same with Sacramento so if you have that those two powerhouses um, who can get a win automatically at home that'll hopefully advance in the you know advance you to the Western Conference Finals and then you know going on against the Suns uh, you know Kevin Durant with the addition of him you know he's really gonna take things to a whole nother level with that group. Um, you also still have Devin Booker, who is one of the best, you know, offensive players in the game as well. And then, of course, Chris Paul, who's, who's still chasing that uh, ring for him to retire and be known as one of the best of all time because, you know, Chris Paul has the stats, but he just doesn't have the ring, and that's what separates him from being the best point guard of all time. True. And when Chris Paul retires, at least we know he'll be safely insured with State Farm. Uh, for my personal beliefs, I feel like with the Suns, it's going to be tough with the lack of depth. I mean, they've got all the top talent, like best 
in the league. But after that, they just have nothing behind that. And I feel like they can do enough to get past the first round, but after that, that's where it really starts to wear down on a team. And I feel like that'll start to tear away. I feel like the Nuggets will be advancing to the conference final, and I believe that the Kings will be able to pull past the Golden State Warriors, and then subsequently, whoever wins in the Lakers Memphis series. Uh, and then I, I believe that the Nuggets would be the champions of the Western Conference. Yeah, so transitioning to the Eastern Conference now, I would have the Celtics versus the Bucks. Um, of course, you know, that's a big question with the Bucks now because of Giannis, he's having some health issues. But as soon as the Bucks get healthy and their whole team is, you know, ready to go, that's one scary group over there in Milwaukee. So um, I definitely believe that they can see the Celtics again in the conference finals like they did last year. And then, you know, I believe the Celtics, they just, Jason Tatum is one of the, he's probably the best basketball player right now um, other than LeBron, but you can't really put that in the comparison because of how long he's been there. But Jason Tatum, he's a young, athlete who just loves to play basketball him and Jalen Brown are the perfect duo they're able to shoot the three from the three-point arc they're able to rebound for their team and they're also able to be a facilitator for their team and they also um, I believe will hopefully win against the Bucks there and I believe the Celtics obviously being like the best team realistically would also make the conference final but then I also believe that the Cavs could be able to pull up an off send off off an upset against the Bucks. Uh, I believe that with Donovan Mitchell's key acquisition and they have some bigs that might be able to thwart Giannis in the long haul. So I believe that the Celtics would top the Nuggets in six games in the finals. When we come back, we'll present our final thoughts for this week's episode. Stay tuned. What does it mean to be a Warhawk? It means allowing myself to dream big and think outside the box. Pushing the limits of what I think is possible Seeing ideas through from start to finish. Collaborating with professors and peers. And seizing opportunities in the community to put my knowledge to use. I'm studying abroad. Learning another language. And listening to the stories of others. I'm making lifelong friends and fearlessly sharing my gifts with the world. As a Warhawk, I stay balanced. Take great care of myself. And get out of my comfort zone. I refuse to let the past determine my future. And I'm taking confident steps in the direction of my dreams. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. And other times it couldn't be more exciting. But I will keep my goals in mind and never quit. Cause that, that's the Warhawk way. UWW-TV has been an important part of the campus and community since 1980. Not only providing on-air learning opportunities for broadcast journalists and electronic media production students, but educating and entertaining our audiences with award-winning news, live sports coverage, original programming, as well as dedicating the mission to developing creative collaborations throughout campus. For more information, visit our website and like us on Facebook. Check us out because you got to see what's on UWW-TV. Here at UWW, we put a lot of emphasis on shaping your involvement. Involvement helps you get to know more people with similar values and goals as yourself. The Student Involvement Office can help you get involved with organizations on campus, or we can help you start a brand new one. So what are you waiting for? It's time to shape your involvement at UWW. If you'd like to learn more, stop by UC127, or contact us at involvement at uww.edu, or call 262-472-6217.
Welcome back to PMI Spheres. Let's wrap it up by talking about our final thoughts from today's episodes. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to mention my finals prediction. So I have the Suns versus uh, the Celtics, and I believe the Celtics will win that game. Um, I believe it's time for Boston to finally raise that, that trophy um, like they used to do back in the day. Um, with Bill Russell days and you know, it's another thing too. Bill Russell just recently, you know, passed away during the season So hopefully they dedicate, you know, the wins to Bill Russell and that's why I believe that they'll have a chance to win the uh, championship um, Then of course you have uh, Kevin Durant on the Suns that uh, in that finals face-off so it's gonna be really interesting to watch how Jason Tatum and Kevin Durant duel it out um, You know, like I said, I believe that the Celtics will win that game but I could see Kevin Durant possibly becoming like the MVP of the series because he's the type of guy that can drop 40 a night in the finals and he could still lose. Um, that's just how it goes for him. So it should be interesting to watch uh, the, the NBA playoffs this year. There's a lot of really good matchups, um, especially with uh, the Warriors-Kings matchup. I definitely believe that, that will, um, who, the winner of that will go very far in the playoffs and I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Yeah, and it's really exciting. You mentioned the Kings. Sacramento has finally snapped their long playoff drought. It was the second longest when the Mariners was still active from 2001, but now theirs was the longest for, I believe, 16 years, and they finally snapped that, and now the next longest streak is in the NFL with the New York Jets for 10 years since the Sanchez. So that's very exciting. We'll see. Maybe history will repeat itself, and this next year another streak will be broken. But that'll do it for us here tonight. Thank you for watching and tune in next time to hear more hot takes all around the world of sports. This has been Please Excuse Our Momentary Interruption of Sports from your regular daily schedule on UWW-TV.